Do you mind introducing yourself? No, I'm uh, Cynthia Self, and I am Distinguished Humanities Professor in the Department of English at Ohio State University. Thank you, and thank you for being willing to participate in this interview. Um, to start off, would you mind telling me a little bit about your background and um, how you got interested in composition, literacy, and digital studies? Yes, um, my, um, when I left the University of Wisconsin, I was, as an undergraduate student, I thought I was going to be an English teacher in public schools. And so I uh, went to Scotland and I did a little bit of teaching there in a coal mining district. And then um, when I came back to the United States, I had forgotten to look for a job. So I uh, went out with, I lived in Houston at the time, and I went to all the school districts around Houston, but this was in August, late August, and um, there were no jobs to be had, you know, they had all filled their their jobs except for one school district and that, that it was Northwoods, right? And they were so happy to have me that I should have um, uh, understood uh, what the situation was. That was an all-black school district um, and the poorest school district in the entire um, area and the only one that Houston hadn't annexed because the tax base was so low. So I got a job at the very best school for me because it gave me a chance to learn um, with populations that I had never even imagined teaching and never understood how much uh, I could learn from uh, working with and uh, that was where I got my first job so I taught at Northwoods Junior High for um, three years and it taught me so much that um, I understood by the end of that that I needed to go back to graduate school and learn more about teaching uh, that I was woefully prepared not that the University of Wisconsin had uh, tried to prepare me <laughs> poorly, but um, they prepared me to teach in uh, nice white middle class um, schools. And I knew that I wanted to teach at schools that were very different. Uh, and so I need to go back to the University of Texas and learn how to do this, learn what I could bring. Uh, and so I went back to the University of Texas and started um, my studies in English education. Um, and my um, application was so pathetic to the University of Texas that they didn't accept me. Um, and then the um, day before classes were to start, uh, a woman had to drop out, one of the TAs had to drop out because she was pregnant and I was the first person they called who could come. So I went to Austin, uh, I started studying, and it was a, a golden time because at that particular moment at the University of Texas, uh, uh, Jim Canavy was there, John Ruskowitz, Maxine Hairston, uh, a whole, uh, Steve Witte, Lester Fagley came, a whole host of people that specialized in rhetoric and composition and brought um, a, a very broad and extensive imagination to the field and helped shape the field in those early days of, you know, the um, late 70s uh, going into the 80s. And so while I was at the University of Texas, <laughs> I uh, uh, when it came time to write my dissertation, the, uh, I didn't have enough money to uh, pay a typist. And in those days, you would pay a typist, you'd write your dissertation out longhand, and you'd pay a typist to type it up. And they had to use like five or six different uh, layers of carbon paper. And then if they made a mistake, every letter that they made a mistake, they had to scratch off with a razor blade and retype it. It was a very laborious process and I didn't have the money to do it. I wasn't a good enough typist myself. So um, at, 
uh, one of my um, friends at the time was Hugh Burns, who is known as in our profession as one of the pioneers of um, computing in English studies, and Hugh knew how to use the mainframe computer at the University of Texas. And he thought, and I thought after he told me about this, that I could type it on the mainframe and then get the printout and then we could revise, or I could revise, and um, using the computer and get a cleaner printout until the uh, whole dissertation was done and fairly clean. Uh, and that's how I started using computers. And because so few people in those days, uh, this was 1979-80, uh, used computers, that particular experience made me um, an absolute expert in English studies. And from then on, that was the area I chose to work in. So tell me a story about a personal literacy experience, uh, maybe one that's impacted your view of literacy. Well, I've told many stories for the DALN. Um, I've told stories about uh, learning how to read and reading cereal boxes and uh, um, singing songs that my mother taught me. But the most recent experience with literacy that has uh, opened my eyes to how difficult and complex the endeavor can be has been uh, learning the ukulele. And it's an instrument that I just took up a couple of years ago and I've been in several small clubs uh, learning how to play and learning how to read music and musical notation and how to formulate chords and the um, I, it, it has opened my eyes to both the discipline that's required and the practice that's required to become better at this effort of reading a symbolic system and communicating what that symbolic system conveys, composing in other words, uh, but also um, how uh, attitude has to figure into that process. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that I really enjoyed learning how to play the ukulele, uh, that I um, took some delight in it, some pleasure. I don't think I would be able to go through the the discipline of learning how to play. So that reminds me of just how similar that particular process is, and that complex of the complex of um, factors is uh, for people who are learning to read and compose alphabetically. So. What would you say is your definition of literacy? Well, my definition of literacy is uh, the, the activities, the events, the understandings, the values, the experiences that are associated with reading and composing using uh, shared symbolic systems, either mathematical notation, uh, musical notation, alphabetic notation. Um, so uh, using all, all of those systems or any of those systems, but also understanding that um, the practices and the values of literacy, because values are a part of literacy, are shaped by the cultural context, the historical context, your economic context, your um, linguistic context, uh, the geographical location, um, your geographical location in the world, and that uh, literacy varies widely. Those experiences, those understandings, those values, those practices, those events, they all vary widely depending on the context within which they're practiced. So I don't see literacy as one thing, but I see it as a whole complex of factors and events and practices and values uh, that surround reading, composing in different systems. So would you say that you have a metaphor that um, guides you or gives you direction in this view of literacy? To me, um, literacy is not a thing, but it's, uh, I would liken it to uh, the particle wave and field theory. That is, it 
you can have a literacy practice that's a particle, a, an event that's a particle, but that event or those practices change over time and place, so it's a field. And then finally, uh, the practices and experiences and values happen in a context, so it's also a field. Literacy is a, is a field, a context. So to me, literacy is both a particle a wave and a field, um, and in that uh, not uh, bounded by one time or one place or one context. So as you teach your students about literacy and as you have them go in and interview people about literacy, um, you often ask your students to invite people to tell a story. What do you feel is the significance of personal narratives in regards to literacy. Yeah, well, you know, uh, a personal narrative is sometimes the most uh, natural uh, way or genre for communicating, right? And it's not that I think that that genre that we all do of telling a story has any capital T truth value, but uh, when you tell a story, it is just laden and laced and sedimented with personal understandings of what literacy is, what the expectations for literacy are, what your values surrounding literacy are, um, what your um, economic class, uh, gender considerations, familial um, expectations are. Um, all these things are layered into stories. They're just there. They're, they're part of the fabric of a story. So you can get such perspectival glimpses into people's literate lives through the telling of stories um, that it provides a marvelous lens through which we can discern some of the personal uh, experiences and values and understandings of literacy, not always directly, but sometimes indirectly. So what, why do you feel like literacy is important and why should we be studying it as a field? Well, I mean, it's what makes us different. Um, it's what makes us human. Um, it is an, it is the activity and the understanding that makes us, uh, that ties us one person to another person. So it's, it's the um, literacy is a way of staying in touch and sharing uh, what we know and being human. And for that reason alone, I think it's uh, well worth studying.